Go Fruit Hey Fruit Bats, it's Freely Banana Girl here. Welcome to another episode. So look at that face, folks. Look at that swelling on that face. Look at that ugly noggin. I am sorry to put that in your face, probably first thing in the morning or when you're having your smoothie, because that is just shocking. I'm almost embarrassed to show it because I look like hell. And you know what? I absolutely felt like hell as well. I was on death's door. It was a very, very serious time in my life. It was the sickest I've been in my life. And it was touch and go at one stage. It really, really was. So this is like five years ago when we were house sitting and there was a cashew tree at the place where we were house sitting. And I love cashew fruit. It's like the most amazing sweet fruit. But the legume, the seed underneath that's attached, it can be extremely dangerous. It's toxic unless it is heated. There's like toxins inside the shell that need to be heated in order to be consumed. So I must have been fully undercarbed at that stage because I felt like fondling the cashew. So I went up there and I felt it up and, you know, got all intimate with the cashew. And I must have put my hand to my face because within an hour, my face started to puff up big time and it just grew and grew and grew. And this photo does not do it justice. Seriously, it got so big and hard. It was so, so hard. And I was in excruciating pain. So this went on for seven days. I didn't eat for seven days. I had absolutely no appetite whatsoever. So that's when you should be fasting, when you have absolutely no, no appetite whatsoever. And you've got a fever and you're really ill. Like I was, I was thinking I could die because I was in that much pain. And you might think that's being dramatic, but seriously, at the time, that's how it felt. And I was in extreme pain 24 seven, wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping, and it wasn't giving up. It was throbbing. It was like someone was yanking out my tooth without any, you know, anesthetic or anything like that. And looking back, I'm like, oh, why didn't I go to the hospital? Why didn't I go to the doctors? And it's because I had this real extreme like phobia of doctors and hospitals. And the funny thing is the lady who we're house sitting for, she came back and she actually said, look, we have to get you to the hospital. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to the hospital. She's like, well, at least to doctors. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we went to the doctors and the doctor's like, we need to get you on antibiotics straight away. And, and I said, no, I'm not taking antibiotics. And looking back, I'm thinking, man, you know, that could have been my life then. That poison could have destroyed my immune system and I could have been dead. That is the reality of it. So I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but this is what happened to me. And just let it be a warning. This is a powerful little legume. It's a poisonous little legume. And unless it's heated, it cannot be consumed. So just be very, very careful. And personally, I rarely eat cashews. It might be something like once a year. It might be like a sauce, like a cashew sauce in a, a raw food treat or something like that. But I stay away from them because I go for the high carb foods. They're the ones that have the nutritional benefits that I'm after. They give me the most energy. They make me feel and look my best. So just for your information, I want to show you the process that your cashews go through before you get them. It's quite a rigorous process too. I was shocked actually at all the steps that they need to go through in order to be safe for consumption and, you know, tasty enough for you to actually enjoy the cashew. Yeah, this is the first step. Uh, we do the steaming. We open the top of the steamer and put the runners in. We use the shells of the runners to fuel the steamer. Yeah, the steaming help when they are cutting the nuts, then we, uh, we get holes. When it's not steam and we are cutting, you get only broken. This is the second step from the steaming. Then we we'll spread it on the sheet for 24 hours to cool down so that we can send it to the cutting site. If uh, the runners is hot and we are cracking, you, you, it can crack unless you cool it down. This is the cutting site. Every day we, we crack 800 kilos. We have machine that we use to crack it. At the cutting site, we have 19 workers. So there's two steps in the cracking process. It's really cracking and deshelling. Uh, the women first crack the nut open and then they have to remove it all the way, the rest of the way from the shell. The sap that surrounds the nut in the shell is the same chemical as the chemical that's in poison ivy and poison oak. So most people are very allergic to it. 
You'll notice that some of the women are putting oil on their hands. That's to protect them from the sap that's within the cashew nut itself that would irritate their skin if it got on it. Okay, this is the fourth step. And this is the dryer. We dry the, from the cracking side, we put it in the oven dryer to dry it. To be, for the kernel to be easier to peel. That's why we put it in the dryer. From the oven, then we send it to the peeling side. This is the peeling section. Here they peel the tester from the kernel to get the white kernel from it. From here too, then we go to the sorting side. Yeah, this is the last step. Here they separate the bigger ones from the smaller ones. So here they separate everything and put it in the bosses for them for us to send it to the, our customers.